blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Na la kadich nung amort, kadak nijabuja. We acknowledge the Noongar people as the original custodians of this land. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, has been revealed as the light to the nations. Let us bring our darkness to his light, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, your Son came to seek the lost and was baptised with sinners. Grant that we who have been baptised in his name may reach out in the love to those in need with mercy of Christ our Lord. 
who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Hear the word of the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the earth trees rise and strips the forest bare. In his temple, all the glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forevermore. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit and he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. Hear the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you. I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany and it is important in many ways. Firstly, today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus and how important it is for us to see our baptism through Jesus' baptism. And more about that later. Secondly, this is the first Sunday since November that the cathedral has no advent candle stand and a Christmas tree. And this is the last Sunday that the nativity scene is present. Thirdly, it's the beginning of our year-long reading of the Gospel of Mark although the lectionary begins in the fourth verse of the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, it, it bears pointing out that the first three verses of the chapter lend important clues about just what kind of Gospel Mark is writing 
and how blessed readers, ancient and modern, should read it. Each of the four Gospels begins in their own unique manner. Matthew, for example, embarks from the very first verse on a lengthy genealogy of Jesus, tracing his Jewish lineage all the way back to Abraham. Luke, by contrast, begins an introduction that reads like part memoir and part history textbook. John, for his part, utilises poetry to introduce theological themes that continue throughout this gospel. Mark, in a category on his own, he never offers a genealogy of Jesus at all, never claims to be writing history and moves at such a breakneck pace that there is little time for theology and certainly no time for poetry. Instead, Mark jumps right into the situation and opens on the banks of the River Jordan as Jesus is baptised. For starters, it is no accident that Mark's gospel doesn't make it pass the first two sentences, without quoting the Hebrew Bible, in particular Isaiah. Mark, not unlike Jesus himself, knew the Jewish scriptures well and adopted them often. He narrates the story of Jesus' life and death and resurrection, not as a new story about God and God's people, but rather as a pivotal moment in the larger story of God, making God himself known in human history. The God we meet in Jesus, Mark tells us, is the same God spoken of in the Hebrew scriptures who is doing a new thing. The second thing these omit introductory verses points out that this gospel that Mark has written, literally good news, is not at all that can, can or should be said of Jesus of Nazareth. Rather, Mark makes clear from the first words of his gospel, that is, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark makes these two important points just prior to launching into the story of baptism because it turns out that baptism works in much the same way. In baptism, we don't stop being who we are or get to ignore the history that inevitably and fundamentally shapes us. Just as Jesus doesn't stop being Mary's boy from Bethlehem, incarnate from the God we meet in the Hebrew scriptures, so too are we all somewhere from some, someone from somewhere for better or for worse. When we come to the waters of baptism, we bring all of that with us, all our humanity, all of the ways in which our families of origin and experiences have made us who we are, the good, the bad and the ugly. Baptisms are awesome moments. There are many baptisms that I'll always remember particularly my first one I did here in the cathedral. Those of my three grandchildren who belong to my daughter and those of whom I married here who have made a connection to the cathedral bring their children back to be baptised. And those who return having had previous children baptised here. And finally, those whom I have prepared as adults to be baptised and confirmed. It has been a real joy to see these people continue to keep their connection to the community of the faith in this cathedral church. In other words, our identities can be centred purely in introspection and individualism. They must also be rooted in our communities and contexts as well. To know ourselves, we must know each other. And in the same way that Mark's gospel is the beginning rather than the sum of all that can be said of Jesus, so too baptism 
isn't a sacramental participation trophy to be display, displayed in a lighted and locked cab, cabinet. Baptism is the beginning of our life in a relationship with the living God made known to us in Jesus Christ. The baptised life is not a career that we can pursue part-time or one day retire from. It is a vocation meant to be lived out with every fibre of our being. That's why it's so important that we renew our baptismal vows over and over again and share in the feasts of Christ's body and blood over and over again and read and study the scriptures over and over again because we humans are so forgetful. An essential part of the Christian vocation is reminding one another who and whose we are. We do that by extending and receiving grace and mercy, by opening ourselves up to the vulnerability and ultimately by telling the story of the God we meet in Jesus, a story that continues until the fullness of time. In Mark's Gospel alone, the word immediately appears 42 times, three times more often than in the rest of the New Testament and seven times more often in the entire Old Testament. It is as if Mark's style of writing is a sermon in itself, just as the story of Jesus' life, death and resurrection moves at the breakneck pace, so too does the life of the baptised. The work is urgent. That's why when Jesus is baptised, Mark wants to feel the water and smell the breeze and see the spectacle. That's why when he describes the heavens opening, he says they were torn apart. Schizonymous is the word in Greek. It shares the same root as the word schizophrenia, a visceral and a violent disruption in the status quo. God's voice disrupts the status quo, declaring Jesus to be God's own beloved. If we want to want a life to remain exactly as it is and if we want to stay exactly where we are, doing exactly what we're doing, perhaps we should rethink our baptism and the Christian life. But if, on the other hand, we desire a life dedicated to following the living God as we work together to build God's kingdom, then the place to start is at the water's edge. From there, find a good pair of shoes and a sturdy walking stick because the journey has just begun and the work of the kingdom is far too urgent to wait. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light, washed clean by the waters of baptism, let us pray that we may live the life to which he has called us. Lord Jesus, eternal word, proclaimed as the Christ by John the forerunner, hear us as we pray for all who proclaim your word. Bless, we pray, Kay, our Archbishop, and Archbishop Geoffrey of Adelaide, Primate of Australia. Lord of truth, Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, baptizing with the Holy Spirit, strengthen us to withstand all the trials of our faith. We pray especially for communities threatened by bushfires this summer. We pray also for communities in Australia and throughout the world that are struggling to contain pandemic disease, especially for those places in lockdown for those places where medical staff and resources are stretched, and for those places where people are dying. Lord of truth. Lord Jesus, bringing forgiveness to all who repent, teach your church dependence on your grace. Bless, we pray, this cathedral, the dean and all who work and worship here, especially the stewards, welcomers, guides, and shop volunteers. Lord of truth. Lord Jesus, fulfillment of the promises of old, give hope to all who suffer or are ignored. We offer prayer that this new year may bring hope and promise to those in our society who are fearful for the future. We pray for healing, especially for Chuan, Beverly, Peggy, Julie, Ben, and Trevor, and all who are on our hearts today. Lord of truth. Lord Jesus, beloved Son of the Father, anoint us with the gifts of your Holy Spirit, Bring peace and unity to the world for which you laid down your life. We pray for the people of the United States of America, shocked by the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol last week, for peaceful democracy, rule of law, and restored trust. Lord of truth. Lord Jesus, bringer of hope, Share with all the faithful the riches of eternal life, especially with Andrew Curran, Lynn James, and Trevor Hodgkin, recently departed, and the year's mind of Philip Crane, Lynn Koloshi, Ernest Lee Steer, Evelyn Halley, Todd Whitten, Rob Stalk, Miriam O'Connor, and Rochelle Moran. Lord of truth. Lord Jesus Christ, in you the Father makes us and all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Amen.
We are the body of Christ. The, spirit is with us. the peace of the Lord be always with you.
We are the body of Christ. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours now and always, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. You anointed him as Messiah, the light of the nations, and revealed him as the hope of all who thirst for righteousness and peace. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying... Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be but partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and look for his coming again. We celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of the nations, we thank you for nourishing us with this holy sacrament. Guide us by your presence that we may bring your light to those who dwell in darkness and establish your justice in the earth. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest to you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.